After six years, the Adidas's most iconic tennis shoe, the Barricade, is back. And today we're going to take a look at them before I take them out for a test drive on court and let you know what I think. So, let's check them out. Welcome back. So if you're new to this channel, my name is Ashley Neves and I run the Tennis Mentor YouTube and Instagram accounts, giving tennis tips to coaches, players and parents. I've also been making a number of tennis product reviews, including a recent unboxing and review of the Adidas Ubersonic 4. I'll put a link to that above me here for you to check out. But today we're looking at the brand new Barricade 12s, which came out just a couple of days ago. And I'm super pumped to have my hands on them now. So if you've been in tennis for a number of years like me, you'll know that the Barricade is a legend legendary tennis shoe in the sport. It's been around for over 20 years now, originally being launched in the year 2000 and has had 11 different models since. My personal favourite was the Barricade 2, possibly because it was one of my first real tennis shoes when I was about 12, 13 years old. Unfortunately, about six years ago, Adidas stopped making them, so I was so excited to hear when they were bringing these ones out. So first of all, here is the box. And as you can see, like most of the Adidas ranges nowadays, it's made using recycled plastics. So massive well done for Adidas for what you're doing with the prime blue and prime green ranges. Let's open the box. And here they are. So let's take them out. This is the new Barricade 12 2021 edition in the Tokyo color range. So as you can see here, um, if you look inside, you can see that it's got the gold Adidas logo. Um, and these are actually reflective um, and they come up as gold for the Tokyo Olympics. You will have seen Maria Sakari and Stefanos Sissipas uh, wearing this colorway at the Olympics. There are a couple of other colours out that you can purchase and they come in men's and ladies as well. So yeah, here they are. And as you can see, they are a pretty funky design. And what I love is this big Adidas font on the sides. In my opinion, Adidas have become a lot braver in their designs recently. Not only their shoe designs, uh, but their clothing designs as well. And I love it. So first, let's take a proper look at the outsole. So as you can see here, we've got the zigzag herringbone pattern. This is a multi-court sole, um, but they're very well suited to clay courts with the zigzag pattern, really good for sliding, but also suited to hard courts and other surfaces as well. So if you're a player that plays on lots of different surfaces, this is the type of sole that you need to be looking at. You'll also see through the arch of the outsole is Adidas's famous torsion system. And this goes all the way up the arch on the outside of the foot and on the inside of the foot as well. This is designed to give players really good stability moving laterally around the court and just extra arch support as well. So I'm really pleased they brought this into the new model as they had in the old models too. The outsole itself comes up around the outside edge of the shoe. So it's gonna to add to the durability for those players that like to slide and to drag their feet. You can see that goes all the way around here. Moving up to the midsole, you can see that the shoe has the latest bounce technology. So if you were to compare this to the Ubersonic 4s or the Adidas Soul Court Boosts, which I play in both, the Soul Court Boosts have boost technology, which is a very cushioned midsole, which is designed for comfort, so it feels super comfortable underfoot, but it's not as responsive as the bounce that we have here and the light strike that you see in the Ubersonic 4s. So this shoe should be a higher performing shoe than the Soul Court Boosts, although may not have quite as much cushioning. You can see here, if you give it a squeeze, it is still pretty cushioned. You'll also notice with the heel of the shoe, it's slightly angled, which is gonna help to keep your foot in place and keep your heel in place in here as well. When you take a look inside the shoe, I take these laces out here, you'll see these little pads of cushioning. Uh, this is called GeoFit, don't know if you can see that in the shoe there. Um, but what this is gonna do is really hug your ankle and your heel to really give it lots of support. But at the same time, it's got these gaps in between to give your Achilles a little bit of freedom. I really like the extra padding that you get on the Adidas Soul Court Boosts as well. So I'm hoping that this is gonna feel quite similar to those. When you look at the tongue of the shoe, it's got some soft cushioning in here, almost like a very thin memory foam. And the tongue is actually attached to the inside of the shoe as well. Not quite like the Ubersonic sock design, um, but it's attached, which will give you a bit of stability on there. And if you take a look inside 
the shoe here, you can see the lacing system is actually slightly elasticated, giving you a little bit more freedom for movement, especially when your feet get really hot and start to expand. What I also love in its design is the asymmetric lacing pattern here. I like its aesthetic look, but it's actually to help with the performance of the shoe too. Finally, moving on to the upper, it looks as though it's a fabric material, but it's actually a molded design. You can hear it here. The barricade is designed to give you super stability and performance on the court. So any soft fabric material is going to allow your foot to move too much within the shoe. So this molded material is gonna to help to keep your foot secure and in place when you're making quick movements around the court. One question I've had from you guys is, is this molded material going to be too stiff or is it gonna to be too hard wearing when wearing in? So I will let you know once I've had a play test. But what you'll notice is it's quite a wide shoe. I mainly wear the sole court boosts, which are known for having a very wide toe box. And in those shoes, I tend to wear a UK size eight. When wearing the Ubersonics, I go up half a size wearing an eight and a half. And so I decided to order these in an eight and a half as well to be safe. And when putting them on, they were really comfortable. I've actually got weirdly wide feet. So I'm always worried when I buy a new pair of shoes as to whether they're gonna to be too narrow for me. These have been super comfortable so far. I would say they fit somewhere between the Ubersonic and the Sole Court Boosts. Sole Court Boosts being super wide, Ubersonics being more suited to the narrow foot. This fits somewhere in between. But I think the fact that it's got this elasticated lacing system is going to allow for a little bit more space for the players with wider feet, but also give you the option to tighten it up slightly if you've got more of a narrow foot. So I think these are gonna be suitable for most foot types. So there are your first looks at the barricade. Let me know in the comments below what you think of its design. But right now, I'm gonna head down to the tennis club, put these on and put them to the test. Let's go. So as you saw, as soon as I got to the club, I took the shoes out of the box, put them on my feet and took them for a test run. Started off with my usual five minute warm up, doing a few shuttle runs back and forth along the court with some high knees, side steps, that sort of thing. Then I played for around 45 minutes to an hour using my slinger bag, hitting some forehands, backhands, lots of lateral movement and some up and down movement as well. And finished off with doing some serves and a few agility drills too. Obviously I was testing them out on clay court as you saw. So I wasn't able to test the true stability and responsiveness as you would on a hard court 
with those quick changes of direction. But I know that these shoes are gonna perform really, really well in that setting due to how well my feet were held into the shoe. I was a bit wary at the start because I've got super wide feet with regards to the upper being that slightly stiffer molded design as opposed to a, a softer fabric. And from the questions that you guys asked me over on Instagram about how long they took to wear in, to be honest, when I put them on my foot, first of all, I could feel the stiffness mainly around the ball of my toe here where I've got quite wide feet. But as soon as I started jogging around, I don't know whether it was the fact that I forgot about it, but there was no discomfort there at all. And certainly by the end of the session, I could feel that it was already slightly softer. I must say that these probably are going to take a little bit more time to wear in compared to the Soul Court Boost with that softer fabric material and the Ubersonics as well. But I think what you're getting in return is a lot more stability with the foot being really well supported all round. I could feel the GeoFit pads inside the foot really hugging my ankle in place and making sure that it's nice and stable. And there was definitely no movement involved there, even when I was sliding around the clay. As I mentioned before, this is a multi-court outsole, but it's pretty similar to a clay court shoe so if you do play on the clay this is ideal the shoe definitely feels a bit lighter than the sole court boost so you're gonna be able to move around the court slightly quicker but in turn having that extra width and extra stability compared to the ubersonics I think it will give you a nice balance between the two not quite as soft and cushioned as the sole court boosts with the boost midsole but lighter faster and more stable as expected the width of the shoe definitely suited my foot shape better than the ubersonics they're still slightly more narrow than the sole court boosts but me with a wide foot it wasn't a problem at all and I do see that this mold will over time get slightly softer and more forgiving to be honest I don't have much bad to say about the shoe I do think it will take slightly longer to wear in than some of the other Adidas models but like I said at the start it's probably going to be worth it with regards to the way it performs on the tennis court there you go I hope you enjoyed that review let me know what you think of the shoe in the comments below or if you've managed to try it out yourself if you'd like to see more of my tennis product reviews consider subscribing to the channel I also make lots of coaching tutorials as well to help to give you tips and advice on how to better perform on the tennis Court. Thanks again for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time.